are beans. Crime is on the rise and everyone's out there getting all crazy and being angry and whatnot. What can we possibly do about this? What if you met the needs of your citizens? Should we be sympathizing with criminals? Hey, what if people didn't have food insecurity? Hey, what if education was high quality and affordable? What if water was safe to drink? What if shelter were a right and people weren't driven by the threat of eviction? What if working a full-time job paid a living wage? These are literally just the basics. It seems counterintuitive, yes, but sympathizing with criminals is literally how we start to fix problems. Analyze why they did what they did, what drove them to the point that they committed the crime. Were they stealing bread because they needed to feed their family? Then just replace stealing bread with whatever crime and feeding family with whatever need. We have a hostile enough environment that people are choosing to just do crimes because it's the most effective way to continue on with their life. And people who are working full time are not being paid enough to live, so they have to do something else. And sometimes that's crime. There should not be a situation in what purports itself to be the richest country on the planet where someone can work 40 hours a week and not be able to afford their own one bedroom apartment. So this TikTok by Endeavorance points out this idea that in order to stop crime, we should actually bother to get into the minds of people who are committing crime. And then, I know it's a wild idea, try to actually prevent crime and to prevent the things that motivate people to crime and fundamentally this is what is so important to understand because regardless of the crime it is really important to look at the system that exists from the perspective of people who would commit crime and the reason for this is very simple because there are a couple of different types of categories of crime that exist one of those crimes being crimes of like poverty and desperation, right? Crimes that people commit when it's really their only choice in order to survive. Things like drug dealing and things like that. And if you put yourself in their shoes and think about all of the different crimes that they're committing, you can also think about, well, what would make somebody less likely to do this? And then we can find out that if they're crimes of desperation, well, making sure that people have housing no matter what guaranteed to them well then if they don't have the threat of homelessness looming over them well then maybe they'd be thinking a little bit more clearly they'd be less stressed and they'd be less likely to lash out and commit some sort of crime in order to survive and then we think about things like well maybe we should also provide with like basic amounts of food then and like you know health care so that they know that they're taken care of and they feel like they're a part of the community. Well then there you go, you might have solved like a ton of crimes right there just by making sure that people have their basic needs covered. Then there's another layer of crime and that is crime that is committed with malicious intent. People who are willfully seeking to cause harm to other people. And now what do those people look for if they're trying to cause harm to other people? Well they look for people that are vulnerable. They look for moments when they feel like they can get away with crime. They look for systems and institutions that would be willing to give them power that would save them from scrutiny. And all in all, they basically try to identify who will people care about, who will people not care about. And they target the people that they think systems, institutions, and communities won't care about. So what is the solution to that? Well, Golly gee, it turns out the solution to that also is the same exact thing of making sure that we have guaranteed systems to make sure that everybody has access to basic necessities, that everybody is a safe place to go. That if we had, for example, a universal housing guarantee, that if we had government-owned housing where anybody could just show up at any time and be given a place to live, that Victims of domestic violence, for example, instead of fearing being pushed out onto the streets, could actually go to a place where they would be safe and they would know that they have a roof over their head no matter what. And so that not only would help people who are trying to escape violent situations, but it also would make people who would otherwise commit violent acts think twice before committing it because they will see that somebody would have a place to go, they would have people that they could talk to, and they would have a system structure of support that would then turn it around and actually readily identify the perpetrator and actually investigate them and put them in jail or something like that. And so if we understand this, if we make it clear that as a community we will all care for each other no matter what, well then it makes it harder for people to commit 
commit acts of violence against others because they know they will be scrutinized. They know that their victims will be cared for by other people in the community. And this is actually one of the ways that police create crime because under our current system, police actively target and harass marginalized people. And if police are harassing marginalized people and by default not trusting or believing marginalized people, that creates an environment where criminals feel perfectly comfortable committing violent acts against those same marginalized people. That fundamentally, our biases that exist within the policing system actually create an environment that allows people to be victimized by crime. So really, our system of policing actually creates way more crime than it stops. So if we take this all together, really the solution to crime in our communities is not to increase the budgets for police. It is to start by creating environments around people that make sure that people are not feeling desperate and overwhelmed, that we make people feel safe and secure, so that people who would commit crimes of desperation are not desperate and would not feel the need to commit those crimes, and that people who would commit crimes of a predatory nature would not feel comfortable or capable of getting away with those crimes because their victims would be taken care of and watched after by the community. So yes, we should bother to get into the minds of criminals and we should figure out how to create systems and institutions that make violence something that is unthinkable. Whether that be systemic violence in the denial of food, health care, and housing, or whether that be the individualized violence of criminals who go out of their way to target marginalized communities with individualized violence.